Why are rules important in life? Why do rules make math easier or hard? What is simplest form in math? These are some of the questions that we discussed at the start of our lesson. What we want to do is we want to get to the point that when we have rules in mathematics, it makes things easier. It also gives us a universal language to work with. Here's an example. We learned divisibility rules. For example, if the number ends in an even digit, well, then it's divisible by 2. If the sum of the digits is divisible by 3, then it's divisible by 3. So here we have 3 plus 1 plus 5 is 9. Well, that's divisible by 3, but 1 plus 3 plus 9 is 13, not divisible by 3, and so on. Scientific notation is a method of writing or displaying numbers in terms of a decimal between 1 and 10, and multiplied by a power of time. It's used to express large or small numbers using less digits. Not everybody uses scientific notation. Even Gene Roddenberry didn't use it in Starfleet Academy, but we're going to try to use it now. In order to do that, what we want to do is start to look at the patterns for these numbers. What happens with my values with a positive exponent, 10 to the first, 10 to the second, 10 to the third. You might say, well, the number is getting bigger. 10 to the first is 10, 10 to the second is 100, and so on. So what's going to happen to those numbers when you have a negative exponent? Oh, I tricked you. Did you say the number was going to get negative? Well, it doesn't. Those numbers actually get smaller. The idea is that negative exponents end up representing values for us between 0 and 1. And there's an infinite set of values there. So we can kind of see that pattern here. 10 to the first is 10. So 10 to the negative 1 is 1 tenth. Here we have 100 and 1 one hundredth and so on. What does it mean to have a positive power? How are negative exponents used? Well, if positive powers for base 10 are used to represent large numbers, so what you're doing is when you go from scientific notation back to standard form, you're moving the decimal place to the right. When, when you're looking at negative powers with base 10, they're used to represent small numbers. In scientific notation, 10 to the negative n, well, that ends up moving the decimal point to the left when the number is extended. So let's look at a few examples where we would write First, we start with our standard form number. The first step that you're going to do in each one of these is move the decimal place so that it is to the right of the first significant digit. Since we are an IB school, we want to make sure that we round to three significant figures. Oops, there's a mistake here. We want it. Apologize, that's great. After that, we want to decide, well, how many places did I move the decimal, and would I have to make the number larger or smaller? So in our first example, it's going to make it smaller by moving it one place, or larger by one place. It's going to move it, make it smaller by three places, smaller by one, two, three, four, five places, and larger by three, six, nine, and eleven places. So that helps you to determine what your power is going to be. So 3.46 times 10, apologize, 3.47, it should be, times 10, 2.57 times 10 to the negative 3, 5.6, 0 times 10 to the negative 5, 6.6, 5, 6 times 10 to the 11. Let's continue. Write each standard form number in scientific notation. Maybe a little color coding to help. Blue uh, is greater than, and our, our red is going to be our negative answer. Your first step is to move that decimal. Second step is to determine how many. And third step is to write it in scientific notation. Again, we're rounding to three significant figures. How about writing from scientific notation into standard form? Well, just remember that you're multiplying here. So if you don't have a calculator, you can think how many decimal places I'm moving. If you do have a calculator, then you can plug that in and simplify, and we get these as our outcomes. Again, blue, that number was greater than a um, positive exponent. Red, that number was a negative exponent, so between 1 and 0. Let me 
down to our second topic in the list. Do you think that all numbers are the same? Do you think that they should be in the same category? Why or why not? Well, for the most part, the numbers that we deal with in real life, uh, well, those are the numbers that are from 0 to positive infinity. But there are so many more numbers that we end up working with, depending on the field that you're in. Real numbers are any value that can be expressed as a terminating or non-terminating decimal. All number categories fall under the umbrella of real numbers, though some of the categories share characteristics. So again, we're only talking about real numbers. We haven't explored into any other uh, concepts yet. Right? So complex numbers, something we'll learn about in the future. So when I look at real numbers, I can break them down into two categories. I have irrational numbers as its own category. Popular irrational number that everyone thinks of is pi. Since there is no terminating or repeating decimal for pi, it's irrational. Then we have our other category, rational numbers, which is any number that can be expressed as a fraction or decimal. Integers, which may be a, could be a type of rational number. Whole numbers, which could be a type of integer and a type of rational number. And then natural numbers from there. If we look at the definitions for each, We can see here that this difference is between irrational and rational. So again, numbers that can be expressed as a ratio of fraction and any number that cannot be expressed as a ratio of fraction. Integers, whole numbers, and natural numbers all are a little bit more closely related. So an integer is a positive or negative whole number. So no decimals, no fractions that cannot be simplified to a whole number. Whole numbers are all positive integers, including zero, and natural numbers are the counting numbers. Think what you can use on your fingers. For all intents and purposes, we'll look at whole numbers and natural numbers in one category. Take a moment to think and write down what you think the symbols would be. If you guess Q, P, Z, N, and Z plus, well, then you're on the right track. And we get to familiarize ourselves with these symbols because a lot of questions ask us to present just using the symbols so we know what the, uh, the domain or the range is. Here's an activity you can try on your own. See how many of these you can you can classify based on non not real, real and irrational, real and rational, real rational and integer. Next slide will kind of color code that for you. Ooh. Lastly, we're going to look at real numbers and a couple of true or false statements. Here. Some irrational numbers are integers. True or false? False. Irrational numbers cannot be integers because they cannot be expressed as a fraction. All real numbers are whole numbers. False. Again, whole numbers are a category of real numbers. A number can be both rational and an integer. True. Because some integers can be simplified down, right? So if I have um, uh, 6 over 3, that equals to 2. So that's an integer. So I go from rational to an integer. If a number is a whole number, then it's an integer. True again. Integers are positive and negative whole numbers, so a whole number would be an integer. Some irrational numbers are also rational numbers. False. Tried to trick you there. Irrational and rational are two separate categories. Rational numbers are integers. False. Not all rational numbers are integers when they're simplified. So I'll leave you with the last little math pun here. Do you think you guys should stop fighting? You're both being irrational. See you next time.